Uh, let's look at the scripture this morning. Luke's gospel chapter number uh, 16. Chapter 16, beginning with verse 19. The Bible says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Notice verse 23, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember. Underline that word, remember. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Today I want to bring you a message that's not a popular message. It's not a message that's easy for a preacher to preach on because it's not a well-received message in this modern times uh, that we live in. But today I want to bring to you a message that I've titled, Hell is Real. Hell is Real. Let's pray together. Father, we realize and we know that this is not a very popular message today. We realize and know that we like to hear good things. But Lord, we study the Scripture, and as we study, we find that You had so much to say to Your disciples about this place. And Lord, I think that we would probably be missing the mark if we didn't share with the world uh, that there is a hell and that it is a real place. So I pray that You'll take Your vessel that I now yield to You, and that you will use it. And God, it burdens my heart to preach this subject. So help me, Lord. I need you now more than ever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If I had a subtitle for the topic today, it would be titled, What Will Hell Be Like? What Will Hell Be Like? You know, as I begin to think about this subject, I want you to know that there is a hell. Now, I want to reiterate that, and I want to say it again. Friends, there is a hell. There's a place called hell. And the reason I tell you this is because the Bible teaches it. Heaven suggests it. Redemption implies it. And judgment demands it. It demands that a pastor and a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ from time to time preaches on this particular subject. Hell is as real as heaven is real. Hell is as real as heaven 
is real. In fact, Jesus himself, out of the same breath, proclaims heaven and hell. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse number 46, Jesus said, And these uh, shall go away into everlasting punishment, and the righteous into everlasting life. So you see, our Lord mentions both that place hell and heaven in the same passage of Scripture. If we cannot believe in the existence of one, then you need to understand that we cannot believe in the existence of the other. My friend, one is a prepared place. The other is a prepared place. In Matthew's Gospel chapter 25, verse 4, 41, and then back up to verse 34. Notice the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. And listen to him. He says, Prepared for the devil and his angels. My friend, I want you to know today that if any man, woman, a boy or girl goes to that awful place, you'll go as an uninvited guest because, friends, the Bible said that hell is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. And then in Matthew 25, 34, Jesus said, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now there's three or maybe four things that I want to bring to your attention in our text verses of Scripture. The first thing that I want you to see this morning is that hell is a place of flaming fire. Hell is a place of flaming fire. Look at verse number 24 in our text in Luke 16. The Bible says says that this rich man is crying out and he said Father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented. I am tormented in this flame. You know as I begin to think about the flames of hell there are several things that comes to mind. Hell is a picture of a furnace of fire. Whenever I begin to think about a furnace of fire, it carries me back to the old Win Dixie days. And I remember before we started having those box compactors uh, that we used to have what was called an incinerator and we would take all of those boxes back to the incinerator room uh, and it was always my duty there for a little while to be the one in charge of, of burning all of the boxes. Everybody would stock their shelves and they'd throw their boxes into the incinerator room. And so I had to go into the incinerator room, open the incinerator, and throw the boxes into the incinerator. And I'm going to tell you what, that was a hot job. It was a hot job. Whenever you was going to do that job, if you knew that you had to do that job, you would always make sure that you wore short sleeve shirts and had a good t-shirt under that short sleeve shirt where you could get rid of the shirt and just be in a t-shirt and throw those boxes into the incinerator. I want you to know that hell is like that incinerator. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 42 and verse 50, notice the words of Jesus. He said, and shall cast them in a furnace of fire, and there in that furnace of fire, they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then in verse 50, he said, and shall cast them in the furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So you see, my friend, Jesus himself, our Lord, he preached on the subject of hell. And if the greatest preacher that ever lived on the face of the earth named Jesus Christ uh, preached on the subject of hell don't you think maybe that God's man today ought to preach on the subject of hell Amen. I'm going to tell you one of the largest churches uh, in the United States of America their pastor has made the statement that he'll not preach on the subject of hell 
Because he, he's not sure that it even exists. Listen to me. I've been to Disney World. But I've never been to Disneyland. And I'm going to tell you something. I know that Mickey Mouse exists. Because I've been to Disney World and I've met him. I know that these planets, I know that they exist because astronomers has told me that they do. And I enjoy getting up sometimes looking at that bright and morning star that is one of the planets every now and then. So I know that they exist. I've never been to Russia, but I know that it exists because they helped our president get elected. <laughs> well, that's what somebody said. <laughs> that's what somebody said. <laughs> I probably ought not have said that. <laughs> hey, but that's what, that's what the liberal people are saying today. Listen, if a mouse and other planets and Russia exist and I've never been able to see any of that place those places before except by means of I've never been to Disneyland but the same mouse that lives down in Disney World lives at Disneyland never saw that mouse in Disneyland never never been to any of these other planets but astronomers say they exist, and I believe they do. Never been to Russia, but their president was on television the other day, dropping and belly aching because he was getting falsely accused of messing with the presidential election. So I know that Russia exists, and just as sure as all of those places exist that I've never been able to see, my friend, I want you to know that I've never been able to see hell, but I know that it exists because the greatest preacher that ever lived, named Jesus Christ, says that it exists. Amen. 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 Hell is a picture of a lake of fire. In Revelation chapter 20, Verse 10, verse 14, and verse 15, the Bible te it teaches us that it's a lake of fire. The Bible says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about the beloved city, and the fire came down from the God out of heaven and devoured them, and the devil deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the prophet are, or the false prophet are, and they'll be tormented there for day and night. And then it tells us how long they're going to be tormented. Forever. And forever. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. It's the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Listen. Fire in hell is said to last forever. It's an everlasting fire. It never goes out. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 8, He says, Wherefore, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from you. And then it says it's better to go through life maimed rather than having two hands and two feet that will burn forever. In, and then Jesus said, Everlasting fire. It's a place of everlasting fire. It's a place where the fire is unquenchable. In Mark chapter 9, verse 43, Jesus said again, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It's better in it to enter into life man than to have two hands uh, than to go into hell. Into fire that shall never be quenched. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says that it is a place of pollution. A place of pollution. And brimstone, Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It's a place of pollution. 
But then the second thing that I want you to know about this awful place called hell is it is a place of unquenchable thirst. Look at Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 24. The Bible said, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. Now listen to me. You ever been out in a field somewhere working? Whenever we were boys coming up, my brother's here and he'll attest to it, we used to have to pick peaches. You remember that? We used to have to pick peaches. We didn't want to pick peaches. <laughs> we didn't want to pick peaches, but we had to pick peaches. And we learned real quick like that if you didn't rub up really good that the peach on the fuzz on those peaches would just eat you alive. So granddaddy always dressed us up in a peach picking suit, long sleeve shirts. And it'd be 95, 100 degrees outside. We'd be picking peaches and we'd be burning up. I mean, we'd be burning up. And we'd find ourselves wanting a good, cool drink of water. And Granddad always provided that for us. Heat on the body just about brings almost a never-ending thirst. For example, when the body is being scorched with ravishing high fever, what does a patient usually do? Beg for some water. Ice water. The colder, the better. There is no touch of a sympathizing hand that can be good enough whenever you are are, are just so engrossed in that kind of heat. In graphic contrast, in heaven we're told that there are not going to be any thirst whatsoever. Listen to what Jesus teaches us. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 16 and 17, it says, In heaven there will be no more hunger. I always like to add something to that. You can look at me until I'm a man that loves to eat. Amen. The only time one of my deacons said amen. <laughs> I think he loves to eat too. Amen. <laughs> you can look at me until I love to eat. Bible says right here there's going to be no more hunger in heaven. Well, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. And you know what I like about this? I, 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 I believe this. I, We'll be able to eat all we want in heaven and won't gain a pound. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know how God's going to do that, but I believe He is. I believe He is. Listen, the Bible says there'll be no more hunger. It says neither thirst anymore. Listen, neither will the sun light on them or any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and then He's going to lead them into living fountains of water and listen the Bible says and God and God shall wipe away all their tears now somebody asked me one time says preacher if there is hell where is it well listen the Bible tells us where it is well somebody says it's the heart of the earth but now I'm going to tell you what Jesus said Jesus said hell is a place afar off. Afar off. That's what Jesus said. A place of separation from God. Look at Luke 16, chapter, chapter 16, verse 23. The Bible says, And in hell he lift his eyes, being in torment, and he seeth Abraham afar off. Afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. So we know that there is such a separation that heaven is afar off from where this man is. Okay? Listen, afar off simply means this. The sinner that goes to this awful place is now estranged. Afar off from God. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, listen to what Paul said. He said, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes 
afar off. You see, before you get saved by the grace of God, whether you know it or not, you're already living in a part of hell because you are afar off. You are afar off. You who were sometimes afar off are made nigh. And then he tells us how we're made nigh. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You see, it's the blood that cleanses the sin and washes us clean and makes us as white as snow that brings us to a nearness to God. And all sinners will remain eternally separated from God. All. And then fourthly, hell is a place where memories live. Hell is a place where memories live. Look at verse 25 of the text. The Bible says, But Abraham said, Son, remember. Remember. You know, sometimes we have to be reminded to remember. And that's exactly what is happening here. God is reminding this man that he needs to remember. Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest good things. And then he goes on to say, And likewise, poor old Lazarus, all he ever had was evil things to come upon him. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. In life, in the here and now, he was a beggar. He didn't have anything but a trust in God. Amen. And because he trusted me, he is now comforted. And because you trusted nothing but your riches, and they were your God, you are now Tormented. So the rich man's memory is reverted back to his lifetime in the here and now. And there is no doubt that he could remember Lazarus. He could remember the cool water that he once had. He could remember the good things in life that he had received. But then he remembered something else. My goodness, I got father and brothers who are back at home. Who are back at home. And that brings me to the fifth thing that I want to share. I said three or four, but I got five, okay? Would it be all right if I share the fifth thing? Right on. Right on. The fifth thing. Hell is a place where men, women, boys, and girls will pray. Did you hear me? But the sad thing is, it's too late to pray. There is something in hell that we ought to have here every day, and it's more prayer time. Look at verse 24 through 31. He cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, send Lazarus. And talk about dipping his hand in the cool water again. Abraham told him to remember. And then we get down to, on down into the verses, and he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that I would ascend to him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Send him to my father's house because I have five brothers who is on the same road that led me to this awful place. Send Lazarus to my father's house that he may testify, that he may witness to them. Now wouldn't it be nice to have somebody to 
to be able to come back from hell and speak to us. Wouldn't it? Amen. Wouldn't it be that? And probably scare us to death. Man, I guarantee you that if I were to put an ad in the paper and said, a uh, man coming back from hell to preach at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church, we'd probably fill this building up. I believe we probably would. Probably fill this building up. I'd get to see it full again. Man, that'd be nice. But that won't happen because it's not possible. It's just not possible. Sin Lazarus. And what did Abraham say to him? What did the father say to him? He said, they've got Moses. They got the preachers. You see, that's why it's my responsibility to tell you that there's a hell. And any preacher that will stand in God's sacred stand and not proclaim to you that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, he needs to shut his Bible up and never preach another sermon. Amen. Because hell is real. We don't hear much about it anymore today because we're living in what some call a society where people won't accept that anymore. Well, hey, I don't want to accept it either. You think I enjoy preaching a sermon like this? Man, I enjoy preaching good sermons. I want to try to build you up. But hey, if I fail to tell you that there's a place like this, then what have I done? In fact, the Bible tells me that your blood will be on my hands. And I just can't afford for your blood to be on my hands. They've got Moses and the prophets. Oh no, no, no. They won't believe the preachers. But oh boy, it's, uh, God, if you'll let somebody... Come back from the dead. <laughs> he might believe them. I don't know. Could you imagine be sitting at your table and you hear a knock at your door? You go open the door and there stands Uncle Clem who died 30 years ago. I imagine I would exit stage back door real quickly. I imagine so. But if you'll just let one go back from the dead, he'll believe. Listen, sinners mock and scoff at prayer right now. But there's going to come a time that they won't mock and scoff at prayer anymore. Amen. This man prayed in hell. Hell is a place where people plead for mercy, but none is extended. And you know, I love people who look at me whenever I preach a message like this, and they always say to me, Preacher, do you mean a God of love would send me to hell? Would you like for me to answer that for you? No, a God of love won't send you to hell because He loved you so much that He sent Jesus, His one and only Son, to die on the cross of Calvary for you so that you could be saved by the grace of God. And if you're saved by the grace of God, then you don't ever have to worry about going to this awful place. But let me tell you something. If you trod under your feet of the crimson flood of Calvary's cross, you've made that decision. You've made that call. And you will be the one who chose hell over heaven. Because God, God has made a way to keep you out of hell. You ever thought about it? What will hell be like? In hell there's going to be agony and anger. In hell, there's going to be badness and banishment. In hell, there's going to be confusion and chaos. In hell, there's going to be death and darkness. In hell, there's going to be everlasting torment and evilness. In hell, there's going to be fear and foulness. In hell, there's going to be gloominess. 
And if you think there's gossip here, where did you get to hell? In hell, there's going to be hardship and harassment. In hell, there's going to be illness and immorality. In hell, there's going to be jealousy and junk. In hell, there's going to be kookiness and kicking. In hell, there's going to be limitation and losers. In hell, there's going to be mockery and mischief. In hell, there's going to be nagging and noise. In hell, there's going to be oppression. And there's going to be obscenity. In hell, there's going to be pain. But there's also going to be prayer. Oh God, let me get out of this awful place. In hell, there's going to be quarrels and questions. In hell, there's going to be regrets and remorse. In hell, there's going to be sadness and shame. In hell, there's going to be terror. You think the terrorists are bad here? Wait till you get to hell. There's going to be terror and trauma. In hell, there's going to be ugliness. And there's going to be unbearableness. In hell, there's going to be vindictiveness and vulgarity. In hell, there's going to be whining. And there's going to be woefulness. In hell, you've been exed out of heaven forever. In hell, you've been exed out of happiness forevermore. In hell, there's nothing but a bunch of yappiness and yuckiness. In hell, you get zapped. And in hell, you're nothing but a zero. But you don't have to go to that place. Oh, hallelujah! You don't have to go to that place because God has prepared a city for those who trust in Him. Who in the world would want to go to hell when you can make heaven your home? How'd I do it, preacher? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can cleanse and make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How do I do it, preacher? The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be, not might be, can be, will. Hey, Whosoever call upon that name can be saved, will be saved by the grace of God. Do you believe? Oh, preacher, I believe with all my heart. Well, if you believe with all your heart, you're okay. But if you're believing with head alone, you're not. You see, heart and head have to work together. And when the Bible says the devil believes, fears and trembles. But you see, you got to believe. And then you got to confess with your mouth that He is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. Heaven can be yours by simply accepting Christ as your Savior. Stand with me. Father, thank You for Your Word. Use it for Your glory now. In Jesus' name, amen.